Welcome to the News at Four. I'm Doug Petcash. Digital evidence, including browsing history and text messages, was all on display today in Lori Vallow Daybell's murder trial. Testimony continues for the third week, with her trial moving quicker than expected. Vallow is charged with murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and grand theft in the deaths of two of her kids, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, and her husband, Chad Daybell's late wife, Tammy. Morgan Romero has been in court all day for us today. Morgan, what are the major takeaways from this? Doug, a Rexburg police detective tasked with finding Vallow's missing children, JJ and Tylee, was back on the stand today, a continuation of his testimony from Thursday. After attorneys finished questioning him, an FBI analyst then took the stand, both she and that detective, speaking to Lori and Chad's texts, as well as their internet search history. After she went, an FBI special agent then testified. Much of what we heard today was information jurors already knew based on several other witnesses' testimony throughout this trial but they did hear from more experts who handled the case and can back up the prosecution's claims. We also saw Lori's sister, Summer Shiflett, in court for the first time today. She's considered Tylee's advocate in court. As Doug just mentioned, this trial is going by quickly, with the judge even canceling court last Friday. J.J.'s grandfather, who's been here every day, fighting publicly for his grandson since he went missing, says he's relieved by that. Okay, week three starts today. Uh, I think it's gone by extremely fast. I'm very pleased with everything that's happened. I'm utterly surprised at how quick it's going by and how quick the, we're going through the witnesses. So far, everything seems to be as it should be. The prosecution questioned Rexburg Police Detective David Stubbs for several hours. He questioned Vallo at her Rexburg apartment on November 26th, 2019, about where JJ was, and then he went back to serve a search warrant the next day. Stubbs says he searched Vallo's apartment, her brother Alex Cox's apartment, and her niece Melanie Boudreaux's apartment, all three in the same complex. He spoke to other search warrants issued during the investigation and the electronic data that led officers to finding Lori and Chad in Hawaii and ultimately finding Lori's missing kids. Stubbs said officers obtained warrants for 18 phones connected to Vallow. After the children's bodies were found, police asked Google to do something called geofencing to see which devices were at Chad's property, where those bodies were found, and at Lori's apartment around the time the kids went missing. Stubbs said Cox's phone, her brother, was the only one that went back and forth multiple times between the two places. The defense asked if detectives ever found a text or email from Lori about wanting to kill her children. Stubbs said no to that. He also went through Daybell and Vallow's search history, showing they looked for Malachi wedding rings in 2019 while Chad was still married to Tammy and Lori was still married to Charles Vallow. Stubbs' testimony was backed up by FBI analyst Nicole Heideman, the state's second witness. Heideman found on September 8, 2019, Chad looked up wind direction. This was the day before investigators believed Tylee's body was burned and buried on his property. She also shared texts between Chad and Lori just days after Charles was killed, saying how much they love each other and how they're looking forward to their life together in Hawaii and moving there together. Every day, this trial continues to to prove that it is more about circumstantial evidence than direct evidence, which attorneys I talk to say jurors should give as much weight to as that direct evidence. Coming up at 430, you're going to hear about that FBI agent's testimony and all of the cell phone records that he dug into and the text messages between Chad and Lori. Back to you, Doug. All right, Morgan, thank you for that update on this story, and we'll see you in a half hour. And for updates throughout the trial, you can visit this story on our website at ktbb.com. And for more in-depth coverage from court, scan the QR code on your screen for a link to all of our coverage of the trial.